Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We move back down the weight classes and welcome this emerging talent from the United States of America. Rarely in arm wrestling will you see someone with more hunger and desire. Can he make it deliver on the big stage? Ladies and gentlemen, representing USA, welcome Brandon Assassin. I know this gentleman way too well, young man. Brandon L. Selsor, I knew his dad. This guy 100% grew up in the sport of arm wrestling. He has been waiting for 32 years of his life to become what I believe he will be and is a amazing champion. And his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, has been ultra impressive here on his way to the crown of East versus West. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the great arm wrestling nation of Georgia, welcome the East versus West champion, Daffod Samusha! David Samusha, hailing from Georgia. This guy is no stranger to the East versus West stage. This guy is an amazing arm wrestler with a ton of inside options and a lot of endurance to boot. Um, I'm really excited to see how he's going to match up here with Brandon. Um, guy 30 years old, 5'10", 187 pounds, with 17-inch biceps and 16-inch forearms. I mean, he his, his, his accolades speak for themselves. Really excited to see if Brandon can hold up to what he has to offer. 187 pounds, ladies and gentlemen, could be the most dynamic weight class that we have in our sport. You mix in the guys that are just starting to put on that size and power in the shoulder and the bicep area. My goodness, look at Brandon El Celsor's right bicep. What a man, what a man. If you've looked at this competition from the outside, you saw David take very efficient care of Craig Touye. You also, if if you're into arm wrestling, you definitely saw Brandon O'Sellsor's war with Craig Touye. So looking from there, you could see that the favorite, most likely David Samusha coming in here. But ladies and gentlemen, one thing you need to know okay, is that, how that. much someone can actually want something. I I'm telling you right now, I've been around Brandon El Cessor for more than 15 years, and he has been waiting for this opportunity. He's definitely going to bring the, bring the war, trying to get the Americans on the board right now. I know he's probably holding a lot of that pressure, um, so I'm expecting big things out of Brandon here. A lot of explosivity. Um, we'll see what route he plans to take with it. And let's not forget, ladies and gentlemen, this is for the 187-pound title. The king of East vs. West. What an amazing opportunity Brandon El Celsor has. Go! Deep inside the hook there. Brandon not liking what he's feeling in the wrist at the end of that. Surprising that he, he opted for the straps. Um, but David staying in control, stayed tight. Brandon's in the match, though. He's definitely in the match. <laughs> no doubt. From the every start the Americans have had to so to far it. today, that was by far the most impressive. David almost looking like he was totally in control and trying to give that little smirk, but I could tell. I saw that cheek moving. Brandon Oselsor is in this match, and what a treat now for the American yes. audience to no, see no one of their guys in a war here. I tell you, let's go, Brandon. The straps, I'm not sure how the straps are gonna uh, adjust this match. Uh, if Brandon is taking the same approach that he was taking for that, uh, it's gonna really come down to how much pressure can Brandon apply in his elbow and with his chest. The straps tied, the, that bottom strap brings a lot of pressure onto your lat and your chest. Your big muscles are a lot bigger player uh, when the strap's applied. So is Brandon gonna be as aggressive? Is he gonna be able to get David outside his shoulder? Uh, we're gonna see right now. 
Don't move your shoulder. One thing to make sure we note, did, was David a little too overconfident? Did he only give a little smirking little, Don't move your shoulder. Uh, actually allowing Brandon to hit there and will he explode this match here? We just need Brent to be in the match after the three second call. Brandon looks like he's setting up for a, a, some kind of top or more of an outside option by dumping that riser, by putting his knuckles down. You guys see how his fingers are facing of it. Uh, so he, it's, that's a top roll setup right there. Uh, the last match went to a little bit of a hook, which is why I think Brandon wanted to go to the straps at the end. One warning there on David Samusha on the screen on your left. Rocking the red shirt and once again, we still are in a match here. No dominance has been displayed by either opponent here. I think we got a match, Derek. I, I don't. I don't think Brandon liked what happened right there with that false start, though. David was able to reel, reel him in and get him into that that high hook option. Didn't go anywhere from there, but I don't think that's what Brandon was shooting for. I'm way under. I'm way under. I will not close the Don't move. Don't move your shoulder. Also note that that I buckle is sideways. on the back of Brandon's hand, so this is a bit of a disadvantage here. Let's see if Brandon can somehow make this a match. Come back in, and there's a lane for the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people playing the game, but only one can be the best. David Samusha seems to be the best right-handed 187-pound guy in the world. So I'd like to see Brandon maybe being a little more offensive. If he cannot bend back David's wrist, then maybe being a little more offensive to the side to get David out of position before he starts trying to roll. Uh, David snapping into that hook really quickly, center table, um, allowed his move to take over and put Brandon in a really bad position uh, with his palm up. Well, I wasn't worried about fingers. I was worried about staying out on, on his. Listening yeah, right. in to the, the side over there with right. Brandon. Mostly down by the bicep. Yeah, I see a super uphill battle for Brandon. I don't think he's going to be able to get away from yep. the yep. wrist curl, the pronation, the carving that David Samusha is going to display. It's time for him to just get as high as he possibly I can. I can't just Do not straight. even think Into about leaning backwards. Everything. And let's gotta, see if you commit to the time. same hook that David does. Can yeah. you put the yeah. brakes on, make this about heart more. and and endurance and not skill. I definitely think Brandon has, has it within him yep. to bring that fire. I mean, he's still aggressive. He doesn't want to go out like that. I mean, <laughs> it, it sucks to go on the stage and go out 3-0. Believe me, I, I know from experience. So I expect Brandon to throw everything he can at David and, uh, and really bring the fire. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. Maybe he can take advantage of that strap, get the buckle on David's side a little bit. But the truth is, is that if he is in any sort of an outside top roll position and David is able to reach that hook, it really doesn't seem to be a lane there. It seems to be a clearly a easy win for David. So let's change it up. Let's make sure that now you build a wall coming forward and you make sure even if he is stronger than you in a hook, that he actually pins the strongest arm that you can apply or that you can display. Rotate. Rotate. Come on, guys. Shoulders. Shoulders. Say the shoulder. Brandon pushing into David. It looks like that's, that's a, a tactic you try to do to get the Ready. opponent's hand, fingers off the back of your hand so they have less coverage. Same. Hi. Yeah, I'm still not convinced that, that Brandon has, is going to listen to me and, and come forward as well and just pull in a hook match. Um, the posture still makes me think he could still be trying to go outside here. And hopefully... If he does go outside, he's just trying to make Shoulder, sure that he gets move. one good strap Shoulder, here before he then inevi inevitably has to go in a hook here in round three. Comes down. Freeze, freeze. Freeze. Straight your wrist, Brandon. And straight your shoulder. You? Don't move your shoulder. It's a referee's grip, okay? Referees both trying to get their advantages. I mean, Hi, and, um, competitors. Go! Oh, oh, that was the fault. What? He went first. He went early. You got a false start? Yeah, 
curious though, the up ref is calling false start on W. <laughs> yeah, thank goodness. I think it was either that, that bottom ref had a win. I'm not 100% sure did he pin him, but man, that was not good. Once yes. again, seemed to me, correct me if I'm wrong, Derek, Brandon attempting to go outside, get the hand and maybe even the straps and being sucked in a hook in that lane. Going under every time. That lane going doesn't under seem to be very and, close. And, 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 no, no. Look at me. Look I'm at me. straight. Look at me. It's, it's like this. Straight. It's, it's like, it's like no. that. Mine's like that. It's the same thing, but opposite. Straight your wrist. OK? Please straight your wrist. OK? We'll tell him. I will fix it. Just straight your wrist. <laughs> going, going back and forth there, Brandon, with the referees. Uh, talking about, you know, wrist flexion and who's covering who and who's supinating and pronating in the hands. Um, it's going to be a nonstop battle. I mean, David is obviously going to be supinating in and trying to get a hold of Brandon. I have knuckles here. Don't cover the knuckles. All right, Brandon praying at the risk it straight once again. Apple, he gets a hold. That's a great transition. That is a great transition from Brandon L. Sassor. Once the hand and wrist got compromised, what I saw is an absolute ferocious attack back forward. My goodness. Now, now we're in a are we in a match? I, it's so unbelievably hard to digest exactly what we're seeing. Are we seeing an overconfident David holding on too long that should have slipped right out and went to the straps? Can he do the same What's thing the and compromise that hand and wrist with the straps applied? Do I have any fouls? One warnings? good thing is we are going to see that buckle okay. now on the back of David Samusha's hand. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that means a lot. The, wrist, the fact that his wrist was compromised, uh, like I said, it, gets, it doesn't get any stronger. Once it's been stretched out like that, that wrist is weaker. So I expect Brandon to be able to take David's uh, wrist again. He's but carving. David's definitely going to be wanting the straps, I feel. That's a foul if you carve. That's super smart. That's super smart of Brandon talking to that wrist. <laughs> to be compromised there. Keep working. Now they're in a hook. Just relax, Brandon. Let's see how long this guy can arm wrestle. You've been waiting 30 years for this young man. Now is your time. Just get on out of there if you can. Stop that shit! All right. Look at the intensity. We was looking for this with Rob Vigil Jr. earlier. Now, just three matches later, some of this American flair has entered Istanbul. Let's go, Brandon. Brandon Alcesor, we need you, young man. The United States of America is on your that. shoulders right now. Let's go, young man. Man, this is super exciting to see the explosivity out of Brandon really attacking uh, David's wrist. David trying to hold on and secure that hook. Now, if he gets in that deep hook again, Brandon showed uh, that he does have something for him in there, but the way David was tightening up, I think, will lead to more of an efficient match. Uh, Brandon being a little bit more open in his bicep and driving sideways like that. So I think Brandon, I, I'm still expecting Brandon to try to top roll here in the straps, but I mean, his wrist did, uh, David's wrist did go back, so can Brandon recreate that scenario inside the straps, which is a little more difficult, but if he does it correctly, I think it'd still be done. One thing I know for sure, Brandon El Celsor, ton of endurance and a ton of heart. What I do not know is how much endurance David Shamusha has. For all accounts, he could be a, a Devin Laird type human being. However, if somehow Brandon El Celsor can take this guy in the deep water, somehow get a win. I can just see the life of the American team helping Paul Lynn, Dave Chafee, and eventually Devin Larratt against their opponents. Because right now, it has been a devastating day for the Americans. Let's go, Brandon El Salsor. Go crazy, young man. I like the height. Brandon needs to stay on the ref. Do not let David carve. Stay your shoulder. Shoulder. Ready, go! David able to get into the hook. Now they're in that hook. Brandon a little more exposed, arm a little, more, a little more open. What options does he have here? Will he? Oh, he's driving sideways. He's trying to get that shoulder behind it. I almost had that. I almost fucking had that lock. <sighs> I think a little impatient there, hey, young man. David had not show any sign of surging. I think your transition between that defensive hook there, even though you were in a winning position, you could tell that he didn't really love his opportunity on trying to pin him. Tried to transition to the press, 
Dude, I still, I still don't wasn't want to able to get there. You can see in the instant doesn't. replay, as soon as he decides to come slow, moving man. up, saw, you can see then the side pressure of David and the win. Brandon Alcelso then looks right at the American teammates and said, I almost got that press locked in. Can't tell from that angle. <laughs> but I love the fact that he's going to keep us tuned in here for round three. Now, was he, was he saying that he almost got the press in or oh, that he almost set the wedge? Sometimes when you get your shoulder above your elbow and you're pressing down really hard, it kind of locks your elbow, uh, which will allow you to, to really use that joint power to stop some surges. So I wonder if he's talking about that. And if that's the case, then I would expect Brandon to go way more shoulder committed on the next round to really, to really it'll look like a press, but it can also transition to a deep defensive hook. Um, but I want to see if Brandon's going to go shoulder forward. I think he might acknowledge that that's his only option at this point. Yeah. And let's just say, like, you're in a desperation here. You've pulled him about three different ways. You've been unsuccessful. You're down two to zero. Now it's time to lay. Get your money's worth, right? You're the let's, guy let's who got it. up in the morning, went to the try airport, traveled 11 hours I'm over trying, to I'm Istanbul. You've been hanging out and seeing all these legends here. Everybody's eyes are on you, Brandon El Selsor. This is your time to show us. You want to get invited back? You got to show a tremendous amount of heart here. And who knows? We've seen with Arif a 2-0 dominating fashion early turn into a nightmare for the guy that was up. Let's go, Brandon El Selsor. Everything that you got, young man, do not leave any of it in that auditorium here in Istanbul at the Green Park Hotel and Convention Center. What an extraordinary event Ingen Terzi has put together here in Istanbul. And clearly, in my 30 years of arm wrestling, this is by far the biggest, most impressive promotion that I've ever seen in the sport of arm wrestling. Hats off to Ingen Terzi. Oh, yeah, we're definitely spoiled nowadays, that's for sure. Seeing the matches with these guys, these super high-level opponents, nothing restricting uh, any of the athletes from showing up here at East First West. It's, uh, we're, we're lucky. This is lucky times for us arm wrestlers and arm wrestling fans. Uh, can't seem to agree on a grip, going to a ref's grip. Um, I, I still think it, it, it's David shooting inside, uh, and, I, and I believe Brandon's going to go forward. I think his, his top rolling attempts might have slowed down a little bit. I, I want to see him embrace that shoulder forward. I agree. If I'm coaching Brandon, there is no more leaning back for the rest of this match. Stop, stop, stop. stop. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, it's a coincidental foul, yep. so uh, it's no foul for either one of them. I think they, it was a, a false start on both of them at the same time. Uh, Brandon did seem to go inside, though. Uh, shoulder wasn't really behind it. David looked like he had shoulder center table control, so his shoulder was a little more behind his arm than Brandon's. Uh, but he definitely did embrace the inside option. Yeah, Dad, Brandon's going to need a little bit more purchase. He's going to have to get that thing over to 10, 11 o'clock in order to start bringing that shoulder in. I'm not completely convinced that's the way he should do it. I wouldn't mind just seeing a straight-up hook match where he sees by the time this is over who wants it more. And a great, a, a great job there from Brandon. The two most impressive things that we've seen here have both happened in a compromised that hand and foul. wrist out of the straps. And Brandon Ocelso's ability to transition no from any sort of outside top roll into an aggressive side presser, side press smash there, grabbing a hold of those fingers. Yeah, it was weird to me that David dedicated to get into the straps just now. Um, I don't know why he would. I mean, I know he was being um, successful in it earlier, but the fact that Brandon's willing to hook was surprising. So looks like David is going straight to the hook and not going for the straps this time. Here we go, deep inside. Brandon slipping underneath. Yeah, that was, that was Brandon. That match was uh, comfortably um, in charge with David Samusha there. And then a little desperation strap here. Now it's, listen, it's the, to me, this is the Hail Mary, the trick play, whatever triple reverse, double pass that you have in your arsenal, Brandon, now's the time to do it. Something is going to have to happen in order for you to give the illusion that you can get back in this match. This is the time right now. I can't yes. stress it more than ever, son. Go crazy here. Do not leave 
anything that you're going to be wishing that you would have went harder or went different when you're on that long plane ride back home here. Leave it all here, Brandon Ocelsor. Let's see what you got. Okay. It's a pretty yes. tight strap there, definitely a, a hook strap. Uh, you see that their wrists are pretty well connected. That's going to allow for uh, both of them to use their shoulders and use their chest and use their inner elbow to apply a lot of pressure. Uh, wanting to see if Brandon's attempting the top roll again. Dumping his wrist like that with his shoulder back. Looks like he's going to try to roll out. Oh! David Samushia, way too dominant inside, being able to close this out 3-0, uh, taking the win there. No doubt, absolutely amazing job from the champ there. Listen, the champ is the champ, guys, and he's there for a reason. David Samushia, the very top of the 187-pound class. Shane Oselsor, you should be super proud of that young man. Brandon Oselsor coming in here, fighting. Look at that bicep. My goodness. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you know how strong Brandon Ocelsor is. Remember, when Ingen calls you for this match over here, really think about the preparation and the strength that is needed in order to win in Istanbul. Brandon Ocelsor definitely looking a lot better out of the straps. Once in the straps, you can see a great side pressure hook angle there from David Samusha. What an outstanding arm wrestler the Georgian is. Really excited to see where David goes from here, who he's thinking about calling out, what's his next match, what else can Engen Terzi cook up? Always thinking of the, the wildest matchups that we can imagine. Um, Still being very impressed with East versus West matchups in general. Uh, where are you going from here, David? Where are you going? We have an award ceremony for the champion, David Samushia. All right, join to the stage there. We can see Big Levant. Big Levant at the center of the table. He's going to give the award to the champ. David Samusha now about to be crowned the 187 pound champion. So this is his fir fourth title win or defense. So now he has pretty much all the warrior attire. Davi Samushie, everyone, your champion in 85 kilos. Congratulations. All the matches, most of the time, doesn't look too easy. He's a great champion when he finds a way to beat him. This battle, was it tougher than he expected? I will do it, but Brandon is... Celiary sports mania, Mark Nana, Himagis, Hamus Club, we do it. Picro Bro, give him all in Canada, So he, uh, as he expected, uh, Brandon was strong, really tough dude to pull and to beat. And uh, this match went roughly as he imagined. So he repeated that he was as strong as he actually imagined. Right now, you are the best uh, or most successful champion on East versus West. Do you want to go up in weight and maybe try your strengths there? Because I think you have also some unfinished business there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Very we pick up on the that's good. Now, how's comfort to He's um, confident and he's uh, quite comfortable carrying this weight and pull at this weight. So he would wish to defend his title one more time and then would think about to go up category. Your champion, David Samushia, going to be presented those awards from Levan Saganishvili.
Ladies and gents, receiving his award from Levon Saganashvili, David Samosia. <laughs> Samosia of Georgia, champion of the East versus West. And victorious here at East versus West 7, David Samosia.